A lucky find on eBay netted this unfinished 10 mil Linton and Barnstipple narrow gauge wagon kit. A well known, if unusually out of scale, member of the show's standard gauge rolling stock in season 2. While the original kits on the show were vacuum formed over wood, this kit is a later wood and brass version. But it looks the part, so I chose to build it. The first issue was the kit three missing doors. One original door did come with the kit, which opened up an opportunity to make a mold to cast the missing doors in resin plastic. I made a quick and simple mold box out of foam core put together with hot glue with the door super glued to the base. Cheap and simple. Not so cheap as the two part silicone, but it's very effective. The mixing is a bit of a process and the wait after pouring was just over six hours for this particular silicone. After it dried, I started casting the missing doors. The doors were cast in a two-part resin, which is not the greatest stuff in the world to work with, and it dries really quickly in about 10 minutes, so you have to work fast. Doors completed and installed, I added the brass details to the body of the car, which honestly did not fit well and required a lot of fiddling and cutting, but with that done, the upper half of the wagon was finished. Given all the silicone I had on hand and the simplicity of this idea, I went ahead and made another mold box. And this one I put the wagon in itself. Six hours later, I found myself demolding the original China clay truck and preparing the mold for the first duplicate shortly thereafter. quickly got out of hand. Nice! That's right, I made five. I think the resin was on sale that week. At this point, I really didn't need the original wagon, so I sent it on over to Diesel 10 TV in Germany for, for him to fiddle around with it. Anyway, since the base of the molds aren't even, each of them have to be ground flush on a belt sander. And believe me, this creates a hell of a mess. <laughs> Round two. Round three. Remember that episode of Looney Tunes with the abominable snowman? Eh, kind of feel like that right now. How to make money. Thomas Freight Cars. Belt sander. Money. After vacuuming Scarface's desk, I spot cleaned the remaining resin flash off the bases of each wagon. Each base was now ready for its new soul bars and W irons. Here's where things got tricky. I didn't have the correct ones. Pinchy's hungry. <laughs> Having looked at both 10 mil's white metal castings and their vacuum form parts before, it's quite clear that these are scratch built parts to start with. So I decided to do just that. Using sheets and strips of styrene, I fashioned leaf springs and axle W irons. I used a bit of milliput to form the end of the axle box and fill in a few imperfections. The end result required a bit more filing, but it definitely looked apart. Obviously I needed more than one of these guys, so I cut the axle box short and put my newfound mold making skills to use. I cast a few duplicates and ground them flat on the belt sander. This gave me a pair of axle guards and a pair of leaf spring casts to affix onto another piece of wood. Milliput was called upon again to lengthen some of the voids in the casting and also to lengthen the sole bar when I realized I had made it too short a wheelbase. Live and learn. Once that had all dried, rivets from Titchy Train Group were added before installing the whole assembly in its own mold box for final duplication. In the meantime, I started building the buffer beams with the intention of making a two-piece mold. The two-piece mold went fine, but casting it was next to impossible without a pressure pot. And the thickness of the buffer beam just wasn't suitable anyway. Not to mention that the buffers are cheap enough to buy new, and no matter how you slice it, cheaper than actually making the resin cast. The first wagon was an interesting introduction to getting everything right. 
Since the side frames are one piece casts, there is no indication where the axle holes must be drilled. By the second wagon I had this perfected. I would raised the wheels on a sheet of styrene and I would add a little bit of paint at the end of the axle so I could make a centering mark and each axle guard at a perfect height. By this time I figured out the buffer beams. Cut them out of plastic, add titchy rivets to the ends and slide in the buffers. Couldn't be easier. I'm shooting all the cars with Mr. Hobby Surfacer 1000 as a primer followed by a brown Krylon camouflage color which really looks the part of the originals. After painting, the very last detail the cars need are the coupling hooks. 10 mils hooks install pretty easily after casting flashes removed and they use a cotter pin at the end to hold a return spring in place. That's what it took to build these resin replicas of the show cars and I'm still working to complete the whole rake. Oh, more dirty trucks. The only thing worse than dirty trucks is being asked when part six will arrive. Well, follow us and you will be surprised.